Hello, I'm Cresta Cowell, author and illustrator of How to Train Your Dragon Books and the Wizards of Want series. And you're here for the launch of the paperback of the third in my Wizards of Want series. Wizards of Want's knock three times. Um, and I'm sitting here in, in the writing shed at the bottom of my garden in London. Normally, I'd have been going all the way around the country, um, talking at festivals and going to schools. And But like everyone else, um, I'm here at home in, in lockdown in London. Um, and this is the shed in the bottom of my garden in London, where I wrote and illustrated all the How to Train Your Dragon books and all the Wizards of Run series. Um, so it's lovely to be speaking to you Anyway, um, I get to speak to more of you, maybe, um, because we're all, all at home. I hope you're all staying very safe. OK, so Wizards of Once. Um, I, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about this. It's going to be really good fun, by the way, because um, I'm going to um, give you a reading from Wiz Wizards of Once, which is um, Not Three Times, which is um, uh, the new book. I'm also going to be um, answering questions and anybody who sent in a question earlier and um, uh, with the, the Ask Quest hashtag, uh, and I ask it on this on, uh, in this live launch, will receive this signed print um, and I'll sign it for you. Um, and um, I'm also going to be announcing, there's so many good things happening here. Um, I'm also going to be announcing who is the winner of my magical Create with Cress magical creatures competition i'm going to be announcing that later on um, in the party and um i'm going to be sending the winners there the winner of that one gets all this great big australian dragon ultimate edition um a wizards of once proof and also um the the illustration that i that i drew i also be announcing runners up as well because you guys are so creative you there were so many amazing magical creatures so um you'll all be getting a little sign drawing like this one um which i'm going to be um, that's all original original sign drawing um for anybody who is a runner up runners up and i'm going to be reading as well there's so much i'm going to be reading exclusively from the last book in the series, which is Wizards of Once, Never and Forever. This is a proof. It's not the real thing. And I might show you some um, pictures from that, um, that, from that book as well, which I'm, I'm drawing right now. So, Wizards of Once. What gave me the idea for Wizards of Once? Well, I was sort of drawing sprites when I was a little girl. I'll, I'll show you. This is, this is a book uh, that I wrote when I was about nine years old. It's a sort of it's kind of a scribbly book you can see um and these were the sprites that i was drawing when i was nine years old so i was beginning you know there's there's a there's a little sprite there and you can see little elf ears here um, of one of the sprites so i was already thinking about ideas for magic when i was all oh, nine years old so that's why i'm very interested in getting you creating your own magical creatures because who knows what might happen if you start writing and creating these things now maybe one day you might be a writer and might be writing your own stories about magic or dinosaurs or whatever interesting um so um that's what gave me the idea for wizards once and it was also because when i was a kid i always secretly wanted to have a magical power i don't know if there's any of you out there who would secretly like to have a magical power, but I definitely did. Um, so, um, uh, so that was one of the other reasons that um, that I, I I wrote this series. Um, and the Wizards of Once series takes place oh about three thousand years ago, when magic really existed, and there were giants and sprites. It was in the Bronze Ages. Um, but the only thing is, is that magic was allergic to iron. So this is about a world that is cut in two. It's a world uh, full of giants and trolls and ogres and magical things. Um, but the warriors, it's the beginning of the Iron Ages, and the warriors have invaded from across the seas. And so, and the warriors bring uh, this new thing called um, um, iron. And um, 
magic doesn't work against iron. So the warriors are trying to get rid of all uh, the magic and the magic can't fight back because magic doesn't work on iron. So my series is about two heroes um, who are from opposite sides of this world. Um, Zar is a wizard who has no magic and he will do anything to get it. And Wish is a warrior who has a, a magical secret, which is beneath her eye patch. She has a magic eye and she has this very rare thing called magic that works on her eye. And it's about where these two characters can work together um, because to fight the witches, because the witches are really bad and they want to get hold of magic that works on iron. I'm going to read you the beginning of uh, Wizards Once, not, not three times. This is in chapter one. Um, and Wish and Zar, it all starts quite excitingly because you see, the thing is, I like stories that start right in the middle of the action. So Wish and Zar, at the beginning of this book, Wizards Once, not three times, have run away from their parents and they are looking, they think they've, they've found a spell to get rid of witches. Yeah. And so they're looking for the last ingredient in this spell. So they can make it, but their parents don't believe in this spell. So they run away and they are um, on the back of their flying door. There they are on the back of their flying door. That's Zar. He's the wizard boy. Uh, that's Wish. She's the warrior girl. And they're supposed to be fighting each other, these two. But they've they've joined forces together. And that's Wish's bodyguard, uh, Bokin, who has a bit of a problem as a bodyguard because he tends to faint in situations of danger which obviously as a, as a bodyguard isn't, isn't a great thing. Anyway, so they're flying away on the back of their flying door and they think they've spotted something on the forest floor below, which is why they're looking downwards. What they don't realise, OK, is that they are being followed by witches. Those are the witches' talents from above. So as I say, it starts off quite excitingly and this is just the moment in chapter one um, when the baby the baby is a, a little tiny sprite inside an egg there uh, and the baby is trying to tell him he's noticed the talons of the witches above and he's trying to tell everybody witches witches but they're not concentrating and czar just batted him away saying not now baby we can't play now the witches sharpening their talons and hovering not more than 10 feet above the door grinned at each other nasty grins but witches have nasty senses of humor how amusing these children were so busy worrying about the danger from below they were completely ignoring the much more serious danger threatening them from above and they were running away from their parents. That would explain why they were out at night so far away from their tribes and their kinsmen. It wasn't a trap at all. The witches prepared to swoop. But then the witches stiffened as something poked out at the back of Wish's waistcoat, swivelling as if sniffing the air and then hopping up onto the top of Wish's, Wish's, head, Wish's head to peer over the edge of the door with the others for something was a spoon and it happened to be alive <laughs> that's wishes enchanted spoon the enchanted spoon was followed by a key and a fork and a number of little enchanted pins none of this was odd to the witches you know because back in those days enchanted objects were perfectly normal but these enchanted objects weren't normal at all they were very odd indeed these enchanted objects were made out of iron. The witch's eyes blazed red and visible for one horrified moment because you see, magic that works on iron will make witches invincible. So they really want to get hold of that magic. It's hard, hissed the witch, because wish is the only one who has that kind of magic. It's Ah, the witches growled like dog the girl with the magic eye. The girl who has magic that works on iron. In an unusual coincidence, Wish, peering downwards on the back of the door, also whispered under her breath at the very same time as the witches. It's her! It's her! It's her! It's her! It's my mother! cried Wish. 
Pats, who's following us? <gasps> okay, nobody panic, stay calm. Key, could you cop it up into the cop into the keyhole for me? When we should wanted to fly the door as quickly as possible, she needed the key to be in the keyhole so that she could steer the door at, at speed. Uh, uh, of course, boasted the key in a creaky little voice. You see, Spoon, the fork is a mere food carrier, a pathetic little potato piercer. But I have a very important role. The key is showing off <laughs> to impress the, um, the spoon. The key and the fork were both in love with the enchanted spoon, so the key never lost an opportunity to show off. The fork waggled its prongs furiously at the key, and the key stuck out its little iron chest and hopped self-importantly into the keyhole. We'll just very quietly sneak away, said Wish. Softly, everyone, make as little noise as you can. But before Wish could move the key and send the door skimming away, silently away across the treetops, she noticed something very odd. It was up with squeeze juice. He had been getting... Squeeze juice is the little hairy fairy that belongs to... Um, uh, to belongs to Zar. He's a tiny little creature. He had been getting thoroughly overexcited. Squeeze juice doing somersaults in the air, squeaking dire threats about making holes in people's socks and protecting Zar and accidentally biting his own tail. And the sighting of at the sighting of Wish's mother, he seemed to completely lose it. His little bumbly body shot fizzily with sparks. His spotty eyes lit up a luminous bright green, and he shrieked at the top of his voice, Sue's cheeks to the rescue! He's referring to himself. Charge! <laughs> and the little sprite threw himself in a mad zooming dive downwards in a lunatic one hairy fairy attack on Queen Sycorax's entire advancing army. What is he doing? gasped Tsar. Just as the goggle-eyed children on the back of the door were taking in this first incomprehensible disaster, a second one sprang up, bright, fierce, flaming in front of their very eyes. My mother, cried Wish. She's setting the forest alight. So, chapter one. Okay, in chapter one, basically... Queen Sycorax is setting the forest light and down on the forest floor there's Crusher and the, the Snowcats, I haven't mentioned that yet. So they're going to get caught up in the forest fire. Okay, uh, Squeeze Juice is attacking Queen Sycorax's entire army on his own, which is a very good idea because they're going to capture them. And they're being dive bombed by witches. So you see what I mean? Chapter one, you see, I really like to start <laughs> in the middle of the action. And that's how it goes on. You'll have to find out in this book whether or not they find the next ingredient to the spell that gets rid of witches. Now, I'm going to answer some questions that people have sent in. Um, and if, if you get your question um, answered, um, we're going to send you one of these signed prints. So um, remember to, to to send your address in to rebecca.logan at hachettechildrens.co.uk. Hang on, I, I run out of space. So yeah, hachettechildrens.co.uk. So rebecca.logan at hachettechildrens.co.uk. <laughs> <laughs> and anybody who wants to carry on asking questions, just keep on asking them on Facebook or Twitter or or, or um, on Insta, as I said, with the hashtag Ask Cress. And if you, if we are, if I answer, if I, um, well, if there's a really good question, actually, because I'll try and answer as many questions as I can. But if there's a really good question, we'll um, say that we'll send you one of the an, a, a, another one of these um, signed prints. Um, so. Uh, the questions though that we chose before uh, were yes from music with olivia ask cress when creating a book series where do you start off and how do you plan your book series that's a fantastic question um uh where do i start off well i generally start off with uh with a sketchbook i have a big sketchbook let's see have i got one here um, actually, this is one of my 
my smaller sketchbooks there's that's an idea for a picture book called um, um bo peeps library book and so i scribbled all my ideas in in that book but but something like wizards of once let's see i will start with a really big book like this one that's the spelling book and i'll write down my ideas in the spelling book ideas for sprites can you see the sprites there that i i drew or ideas for let's see if i can find the snow cats because i love the pictures of the snow cats can i find oh hang on pictures of snow cats oh hang on there's more sprites there that's me drawing ariel and the sprites do you see it um, but other pictures will be of snow cats. So I, I keep a big uh, book like this where I scribble down all my ideas. That's how I start. And then oh, here are the snow cats. That's me drawing the snow cats. And I've drawn those characters before I've even thought of the idea for the story. Uh, but then I do lots and lots of different versions of the story. Um, and um, and there'll be lots and lots of versions of the story in, in my computer. And then, then I'll look up all about magic and I'll, I'll, I'll try and find out what people believed in Bronze Ages about magic. Um, and, um, that, and then I'll start planning um, and I'll have a general idea of where I'm going to go. Uh, but I won't know exactly what happens in each chapter or each scene or even in each book. Um, so I'll know, for instance, that um, I'll know who the narrator is, <laughs> like in Wizards of Once, um, but I won't know exactly when I'm going to tell you. And um, and I, I know what the ending is, but I don't know exactly where I'm going to get, how I'm going to get there. I love that question because um, um, whoever asked it is thinking like a writer. Now, Yusef Bilikov, can you give me some advice so I can be a better writer? Well, I say I always say if you if you want to be a writer, read masses because it gives you a feel for the way that stories can be written, um, different stories. So read funny books, read scary books, read um, uh, picture books, um, graphic novels, Calvin Hobbes. I love all those kind of ones as well. So nonfiction as well as fiction, and because it, it's all giving you ideas um, and practice a lot and don't worry if at your age you're not writing big books like this I mean um, I wasn't doing that when I was young it's all about practicing um, and having fun I know um, at school there's a lot of emphasis on spelling and handwriting and all that kind of thing and you do have to learn that kind of stuff but you also have to learn how to have fun. And so a lot of what I do is I go around and I try and encourage children to write for fun, for the fun of it, for the joy of it, not to worry about the handwriting. Because I showed you earlier, didn't I, my scribbly little book here, where the handwriting isn't very good and it's not, it's probably doesn't have very many wow words or it's, but it's, I'm having fun. And that is, um, that is, that is how you start to learn to be a writer, to enjoy yourself, um, make yourself laugh, make yourself cry. I, I love things with emotion in them, stories that have emotion. So try and make yourself laugh, try and make yourself cry, try and make yourself think. Um, so um, all of those things will make you a better writer, I think. I'm trying to do all of those things in, in my books. I'm trying to make you think what makes a hero, um, uh, you know, is... Is Sikrax good or is she bad? I'm trying to make you think about all those things and um, what kind of choices would you make if you were in Wish and Zars shoes? And so when you're a writer, you have to you have to try and you know almost challenge yourself when you're writing. Great question. I love these questions already. Um Anushenkos, quest, uh, question from Max9 London. How did Wish and Zara get the three tears of the frozen queen that they used in the spell to get rid of witches? Well, I think that was because at the end of Twice Magic, have I got a copy of Twice Magic? I must have somewhere here. Yes, at the end of Twice Magic, um, uh, the queen cries 
and so they get the tears of the of the, that's Queen Sycrax. Um, so they get the tears of the frozen queen at that moment. I think so, but I just have to check in my copy of Twice Magic. Max, I'll check. Uh, and if I'm wrong, I'll get back to you. Excellent question. That's how they got hold of that. OK, so uh, Sam from Warrington. How did you choose Hiccup and Alvin to be your main characters? How long did it take to make the language? Japanese? Well, um, another brilliant question. Um, Hiccup was always going to be the main character and I wanted Hiccup to be a different kind of a hero so I didn't necessarily want him to be the the, the tough guy the... Hiccup is a new kind of a hero because Stoic and the, and the Vikings solve problems by punching them don't they uh, they're, they're very physical Hiccup is a is a is a hero with um, magical ideas he is creative and a lot of my heroes like Wish is the same as well um, they have they they have you know they're very creative they 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 have creative they think their way out of problems and my books are a lot about that about the kind of hero who I call it has a, 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 a magic thought or a magic eye so they can look in into other people's hearts and see what it might be to be like somebody else you know my heroes are a lot like that um, or they have very creative ideas. Um, so they're not necessarily the big tough liar like Snotlout or Looter in Wizards at Once. They're the ones that with the creative ideas. That's that's my idea of a hero. And Alvin is the baddie because he's got creative ideas as well, but he 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 he, he only really wants power for himself. Um, I I love Alvin as well because I love um, I love the way he always keeps on coming back. Um, he he's, he's quite a difficult villain to defeat because he's always coming back. How long does it take to make the language, language Japanese? Well, um, I'm always making up um, the language Japanese um, the whole time. And I like it to, to um, I, again, I'm trying to make you laugh a lot um, with Japanese, but sometimes I'm trying to make you think. Um, so there's a word in Japanese for um, the largest number anybody's ever heard of. And then add one and that makes you think how can there be a largest number that anybody's ever heard of if you can still add one to it so that makes you think or sometimes it makes you laugh the dragonese or um or it seems to make a kind of a sense i like playing games with language so the name for a chair is bum support for instance um because that sort of makes sense um and um the name for a window is air square and that's making you think mm, a, a window is not only something like 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 that, isn't it? Uh, uh, well, but it's also the square of air inside the window. So I'm trying to make you think a lot a lot of the time with dragon heat in the language as well as making you laugh. OK, so what's the next question? Next question is what is your opinion of the how to train your dragon films? I love those films. I love it. I think you can tell. Look. I love those films. I love Night Fury. But I also love, there's a reason why I have these two animals in my shed. Because I love both of them. That is Book Toothless. And this is film Night Fury. And I love both of them. I think that those films tell the story they, they have quite unusual films they tell um a funny emotional um story that makes you think and is about looking after the wild places of the world you know which is what my books and they're about are about and they're about a new kind of hero a hero who thinks his way out of problems so they're true to all, the spirit of the books even if sometimes they're different you know from the from the from the plot lines or the storyline and they're true to the spirit of what I was trying to say. They're stunning and moving, funny films. And, and I love them. Absolutely love them. So, um, I really... Oh, Aidan says, I really like your draw drawings. Do you like dra doing them? Yes, thank you, Aidan. You will definitely get one of, one of these prints. Yes, I love doing the drawings. I think you can tell. I do a different types of drawings in my book. So some of the drawings are, are kind of scribbly drawings um, uh, to, 
uh, to make you feel that you know things are, are kind of exciting and they sort of cut through the cut through the illustrations in a scribbly kind of a way and others of them are really quite detailed so that they make you this is a picture of for instance the knuckle of e um which is one of the characters in twice magic and that makes you think that's quite a detailed drawing and that makes you think that that character might really exist um or this is a picture for instance of this is actually from my new book set my new book you haven't even seen it's not out to september that's a magical bear called Perdita. Um, and you see how she is, you know, she's magic is coming out of her, her mouth, but it's quite important that she looks like a real bear so that you feel that that magic really might be true. So the drawing is doing different things, but yes, I love it. I love the drawing. How did you get David Tennant to read your books in the car? Well, <laughs> great question. David Tennant may be reading <laughs> the books in your car but he's not reading the books in every single car I suppose um but he is reading them on audio and he reads them brilliantly um we we got David Tennant actually to come and um read the first House Training Dragon book um and this was before he got Doctor Who um because the House Training Dragon books were were based on on Viking Scotland, where I spent a lot of time as a child. And so I always heard the books in my head um, with a Scottish accent. So that's why we got David Tennant to do it also, because he's a wonderful actor. Um, and he has done, even though he was really busy with Doctor Who, and, um, and so he could have said, oh, I'm just too busy. He has done every single book and I love him. He is brilliant. He brings those books to life. He he does every accent. He's just he's extraordinary to watch work and just to listen. He's he's a he's a universe in himself. He's a he's a wildwood and an archipelago in himself. I'd really encourage you if you haven't heard his readings of How to Train Your Dragon Wizards once. They are genius. Um. Uh, oh. I don't, oh, this is nice. Ask Chris, I don't have any questions, but I want to pay you a compliment. I love your drawings and your books and the people in them. Thank you, Henrietta. That's very sweet of you. Um, and ask Chris, Sam, Emma Overthrow. Sam knows that you can't give much away, but he is very keen to find out what might happen in the fourth book. Well, I can't really tell you, but I am going to read you an exclusive extract. And I'm going to also show you some of the illustrations from this this last book, just especially because you come to my parties. Um, OK, so and the last question, Amelia, Ellie and Marcus all want to know who is the narrator. Well, at the end of this last book, you will find out who the narrator is. Now it's time to announce the winner in the Create with Cress Magical Creature Competition. Again, I had to make so many runners up because all of your entries were so incredible. But don't worry if you're not a runner up or a winner because um, it's all about the taking part. It really is. I used to um, enter loads of comp competitions when I was a kid and I didn't didn't always win. Very rarely won. Um, but it didn't mean that my ideas weren't brilliant. And your ideas are brilliant and your dragons and your magical creatures are always wonderful. Um, so I don't think it it, it, it it means that you're not going to be an illustrator one day or anything like that. It just means I had to choose between all these different magical creatures. And um, sometimes I have to choose from an older person and a younger person as well. So it didn't mean that your magical creature wasn't wonderful. But anyway, here are the um, runners up. This is uh, Imogen's Bumble Boozle Beetle, Beetle Boog, the Sprite Dragon. Um, and it moves things with its mind and each of its six legs does something different. And the thing that I particularly loved about this sprite dragon was that Imogen had also made the actual sprites that the dragon owns. Look, she'd made them. And I thought that would be, I'd really like to play with them myself. I thought that would be really fun to play with. I love that idea. Uh, now this is Fidget the Pepper Witch. Um, uh, this is a very different type of magical creature. And what I love about this um, magical creature is how Darcy Pepper is making up stories as she's describing her creature. So she says, the Pepper Witch has evolved to be deaf during the reign of the screaming daisies. 
And I just thinking, what is the reign of the screaming daisy? She's already thinking up a story as she's creating her pepper witch. I, I, I love that idea. This is a very different one. This is a cake guitar uh, by five-year-old Wilf. And um, I love his drawing of the cake guitar. There's Wilf's drawing. And he says, this is so clever, the cake on its tail absorbs light so it can light the candles in the dark. Very, very clever. All of these wonderful ideas. I love the mark making in this one. This is Phantom by James, age 10. And the Phantom, oh, look at the Phantom. Isn't that beautiful? Lovely graphic illustration. It, it can move they're stealth movers and they move through the void, which is another dimension of, the, of this world. And if they want to, they can disappear and reappear on the other side of the world. It seems to radiate darkness and suck light into itself. Amazing. Its eye is the mark of death. Wonderful description. OK, so this next one is Jig the Caterpillar. It's a magical jigsaw caterpillar who, when you are lost, can use her jigsaw pieces to make you a map of exactly where you need to go. And I love how there's a little animation here of Jig the Caterpillar. is not clever. So clever. Love it. Um, now this is this is two two um, people who 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 um, made their magical creature together. Um, Harley and I love this Harley and Lucas um, so Harley, Harley does one drawing of the confetti unisquorse. That's the confetti unisquorse. That's Harley's drawing with lots of detail in it in that drawing. And then Lucas loved it so much that he drew a unisquorse too. And then they made together this wonderful... I love it. Look how beautiful. That's like an actual teddy of Uniscores. Amazing. Just loved it. You guys are so incredible. And then this was the, this was a very unusual one. This is the Uncommon Hopwink. Um, I love this one. The Uncommon Hopwink flies around with a pair of enormous ears that grow, can grow to the, around the size of a small motorcycle. Look at that. Amazing. Amazing. But the winner of the Magical Creature Competition is a crab-armed crump thumper by Dylan. <laughs> I just loved, can you see, I love the ambition of the crab-armed crump thumper. I mean, imagine he, he lives on the Sussex Ups, also known to humans as the Downs. His one big eye lets him see into the future so he can't be seen by humans and he can smell a human from five miles away. What I loved about him particularly was that Dylan hadn't, you know, hadn't just eat the ambition of him. Look at him. It, the, the, the piece of paper wasn't big enough for Dylan, so he, he took loads of pieces of paper, so much paper that he had to hang it out the window. I just love that. So, um, Dylan, well, I've written his name just there to Dylan. He'll be getting this and he'll also be getting, oh, a copy of the ultimate edition of How to Train Your Dragon and a proof of Wizards of Once. And I'll be sending all of you, um, all of you who um, send, I got were runners up, I'll be sending you little drawings as well. Uh, so, that, that, that's so thank you for all your entries they were so marvelous i've had such fun judging these competitions you are incredible you're magic i'm going to read you this little bit just specially for you from uh wizards of once never and forever which is the last book in the series and that that's not coming out till september and i haven't even fully finished i'm just drawing all the illustrations um uh, right now um, so, um, uh, 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 it begins with Wish and Tsar and Bolkin. Um, at the beginning, they are at the bottom of this mine. You know a mine? 
um, they are right down at the bottom in these tunnels. Yeah, so you, can you see they're having to crawl through the tunnels? That's Tsar, um, who's the wizard boy, who's got a witch day on his hand. And that is a Wish, the warrior girl, who has a, a magical secret. She's got some magic that works on iron behind that magic eye patch of hers. And that's Bogkin. And he's Wish's bodyguard. And he has a bit of a problem because um, he tends to faint in situations of danger, which isn't very good for a bodyguard. Um, but they're at the bottom of this mine called um, the Mines of Unhappiness. They're searching for all the ingredients for a spell to get rid of witches. Um, so at the beginning, they're in this mine and and they think they're going in the right direction. But unfortunately, um, you know, because they need to be going in the right direction because there are bad things in this mine. It's about a mile underground. Oh, I would hate that. I don't really like small spaces. Um, and it's about a mile underground and there are bad things. There's this thing called the tatsel worm, which is a bit like a dragon. And there are these things called knockers. Anyway, they're scary things. And so they think they're going in the right direction. But unfortunately, they suddenly <laughs> realise that Tsar has been map reading with the spelling book. And unfortunately, his witch stain means that the map has been taking them in the wrong direction. So this is a bad moment in the first chapter, okay, when they realise, oh my goodness, Tsar realises, while he was map breeding, he had been holding the spelling book and the hand with the witch stain on it. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Tsar swallowed. Um, guys, said Tsar, uh, I'm so sorry, but I think we may have a bit of a problem. Wish and Tsar peered over Tsar's shoulder. Tsar put the spelling book in his other hand and it was just as he suspected. When the spelling book was in his other hand, the one without the witch stain, the directions on the map of the Minds of Unhappiness changed in front of their eyes. Now the little images of themselves were crawling in entirely the wrong direction, away from the place they were supposed to be going. And the crude cartoons of Wish, Tsar and Bobkin were no longer looking happy, but extremely frightened and anxious. <sighs> Bodkin read out the signal for them. Beware of the tatsel worm. Oh, for mistletoe's sake. This is that moment when they realise they've been going in the wrong direction. Uh. See, Zara is looking in the spelling book there. Bodkin's looking over his shoulder. And Wish is just thinking, oh my goodness, get me out of here. Um... There it was, clearly marked, beware of the tassel worm. Why did we let Tsar do the map reading? Well, Bodkin, we were trying to make him feel better, whimpered Wish. But there was no time for recrimination. What's that funny smell? Hissed Tiffin Storm. Her little heart was lit up with such anxiety that you could see it glowing with fear in her little match matchstick of her chest. A stink so noxious it made Wish's stomach heave came reeking and reeling out of the tunnel behind them. And it was accompanied by a scream so loud that it pricked the ear drums like this, drums like the stiletto of a knife. A scream of small animals dying and the sound of that scream sent the poor sprites crazy with fear. And they added to that scream themselves, scrambling up away down the tunnels, ignoring Wish, shouting, come back, come back. And in the tunnel behind them, two glowing eyes appeared. The tatsel worm, part cat, part dragon, heart of darkness. They could hear the scrape of the claws on the tunnel floor, the long, languorous flop of an impossibly huge serpentine body oiling its way through the passages. Crawl, yelled Wish, scuttling away on her hands and knees, going first down the tunnel. And Bodkin followed with Tsar crying after them. No, guys, no, don't run away. We have to face it. We're not running, we're crawling, panted Bodkin, rather hysterically to himself, so frantic with fear that he did not notice the passages he was crawling down after Wish, getting narrower and narrower, and he had to crouch lower and lower until finally he was squirming up on, on his tummy through the dirt, and the ceiling was pressing down on him, and oh my goodness, he could squirm no further. He was stuck. He tried desperately to wriggle forward, to wriggle backward. No, he was jammed tight, like a cork in a bottle. Wish was smaller 
and even skinnier than Bodkin and what so she got through first <gasps> and she was hauling on Bodkin's arm as hard as she could and every little sprite was joining in as well heaving away as hard as they could even Caliban took hold of Bodkin's sleeve in his beak and gave a really strong tug but it was no good Bodkin, Bodkin would now Bodkin really did panic as his back, as his back legs, as I was panicking too, trying to thrust him forward. Move, screamed Zar, but Bodkin could not move, which left Zar having to face what was coming down the passages towards them, whether he wanted to or not. So you see, this picture isn't finished in this illustration, so it's a bit hard for you to see, but Bodkin is stuck in the middle, Wish is hauling away there, and the spoon is going, so Bodkin is stuck in the middle, and Tsar is on the wrong side with the spoon facing the tatsal worm. <laughs> the dreadful smell was now so sickly near that Tsar had to put his hand over his face to defend his nostrils from the ghastly poison of it. There was a horrible pause and then with startling suddenness, a great clawed hand came shooting out of the darkness and trapped Tsar beneath it. So that's chapter one <laughs> of, of Never and Forever. And then I'm really naughty. I often do this. The next second chapter is called Four Hours Earlier. Uh, I'm afraid I'll just have to leave Zara and Wish and Bodkin facing the unknown creature a mile underground. Will I turn back time for a second to answer Bodkin's question about how on earth they had got into this mess in the first place, which is very naughty of me. I often do that. I quite, but it's quite fun. But this is even naughtier because you're now going to have to, you just heard me read chapter one of book four and you're now going to have to wait till October to hear out, find out what happens in chapter two. I'm so sorry. I feel a bit guilty. But not very guilty, not guilty enough. <laughs> <laughs> very naughty of me. Uh, but I am going to show you, just just because that was a bit naughty of me, I'm going to show you, especially just you, some of the pictures from this one that nobody has seen before. Um, okay, which ones shall I show you? I, I did, I already, oh, this is rather an amazing creature. Um, that's called a rage foal. That's, that's in Kanzo and Sycorax. Um, arguing on the back of the rage foal uh, that appears in uh, never and forever um hang on i've got oh yes i love this picture this is a picture of queen sycorax she's a splendid character this is wish's really tricky mother and that's her saying i am not a lady i am a queen yes anyway so that's never and forever oh and i forgot to say uh at the end of never and forever not not three times you will discover finally who the narrator is of the story keep guessing keep guessing um i wonder whether i'll have tricked you <laughs> you'll have to find out in october Okay, thank you so much, everybody, for joining me for the launch of Wizards Once, Not Three Times. And I'm now going to go and um, have a cup of tea, I think, a celebratory cup of tea in my dragon teacup cup. Um, and I shall be eating, in celebration, um, some chilli flavoured dragon, dragon hot crisps. Um and i may even maybe i might put on my laureate medal i was going to wear my laureate medal but i thought maybe it was a bit too dressy but maybe i'll, I'll quietly i'll quietly wear it um, in honor of toasting the launch of wizards well, it's not three times this but, oh by the way yes the, the laureate medal, medal is because i'm also this thing called the um, waterson's children's laureate i'm going to show it for you a moment because i'm very proud of it because um that means that i fight for books and reading because reading is magic and magic is for everyone i really thank you for joining my launch and um i really hope that you enjoy um wizards of once uh, not three times um uh you can get it um, online and um, bookshops are doing um delivery 
um, and it's always tricky, an author, for an author writing each book because you want every single one to be better than the last one. I, I hope you enjoy this book as much as I enjoyed writing it. <laughs>